Welcome to this first entry into the new trading psychology series. This video topic will be focusing on the feeling of the need to always be in position. This is something that I really struggle with myself when I first began trading. It's something that I really see a lot of people get into the bad habit of always feeling that need, feeling like you need to be doing something if you're not, then, then you're not, then you're not being successful or whatever it might be. Now we're going to go through the root of the problem, where it comes from psych psychologically speaking, how it comes about from conditioning. And then of course there's no problem or there's no point without ranting if you're not going to pro provide a resolution. So we, be, so we will be going over the reality of the situation as well. And for this, we actually will be doing some examples. So I will put it onto the live scene as uh, I would like to look at uh, good old Finex over here. And let's get into the first point. Okay, why do we have that feeling? Why do we feel those emotions of always needing to be in position? Essentially fear of missing out. Essentially fear of missing out. Now, we are conditioned, we are conditioned to believe from a young age that if we are not doing what we are essentially purporting ourselves to be as a trader in this in this sense, then we are being lazy and we're not fulfilling our own role, our own identity. Now, this is something that comes from a very, 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 very deep place. Because when you're when we're talking about identities, we're talking about things that are rooted within our beating within our being that we want to be consistent with. That's why when you know, you might be in a conversation, just it just so randomly happens to come up that you just blurt out, I'm a traitor or something like that. Maybe you don't. Again, that's obviously a very, um, that's obviously a very, you know, <laughs> direct example. It's not going to be that, uh, it's not going to be that crazy at all times. Probably going to be more subtle in some way. But when we have that sort of identity of being a traitor, we're going to feel like, okay, if I'm going to be a traitor, I better trade, right? I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be a trader, I better trade. I need to trade in order to be a trader. Understand that that's not what makes up a trader. And of course, from a young age, we're told these sorts of things that you know, if you're not doing your job, you're being lazy. Of course, when it comes to being uh, an actual professional trader, this is a very unique sort of profession because you are in full responsibility and full control of a lot of the, I mean, just basically the whole thing, which we really aren't taught to do, especially in school, you know, you're taught more to be, you know, more to be more of a, uh, more of a construction worker, or sorry, not a construction worker, but a factory worker is what I mean to say, you know, being in lines, sitting in rows, you know, answering to your number and raising your hand to speak, all that good stuff, not really taking responsibility for what you want to do, rather being told what to do and then going forth and fulfilling that in order to feel validated in your own role. But in this role as a trader, in order to validate yourself as a trader, it can't come from that sort of internal belief that I must be in a trade, otherwise I am not doing my job. So here's the reality of the situation. Here's the reality of the situation. And this is the truth. This is the truth. You don't need to catch every move to be successful. You don't need to catch every move to be successful. If I show you this chart over here, like once again, going back into, uh, into, this, uh, into our trading view, you can see very easily in this four, almost four years of action, how many trades were there to be made? Plenty, plenty of trades where you could have made so much money that you wouldn't even need to make another trade for you know a year two years of course this depends on your position sizing but i'm gonna i'm gonna make the assumption that someone who is doing this as a living in in a more serious manner they are dealing with you know a, a, a sizable a sizable account size which is not redundant enough but my point is that putting on a major trade based off of a higher time frame like this is ex is is extremely <laughs> is is likely to be extremely rewarding so again remember do you need to always catch every move absolutely not so when you're in that sort of a mind state feeling those emotions of oh i better sit down at my computer i better do something if i'm not if i'm sitting at my computer looking at the screens i feel like i always feel like there is something to do of course looking at this and understanding that more often than not, there is not something to be done if you're looking at a higher time frame like this. Now, of course, if you're looking at a lower time frame, then there's, you know, it's going to be a little bit more active. We're going to go over a little bit more of a resolution at, uh, at the end of this video in that sort of a scenario. But for now, understand that you are in complete control as a trader. This is a very, very unique type position. 
and understand that you are in full you are you are fully autonomous and able to make these own decisions for yourself not having that prior conditioning telling you that i need to be doing something in order to be validated in order to be validated okay what's number two we got three big ones if i don't catch this move i'll never see another one like it again so when we're in that emotional state, when we're in that emotional state of, I always need to be in a trade, it's typically coming from this frame. This is probably the most common, common one. If I don't catch this move, then I will ne never, never see another one again. Now, where does this really stem from? It's something that I call moon boy mentality, which is an awful thing. This is an awful thing. It's very prevalent with retailers because we in crypto land have been very uh, spoiled. We've been very spoiled with moves that result in X's rather than percentages. And even, and even those percentages are pretty damn crazy themselves. But my point is, is that again, for people entering into the late stage of a parabolic bull cycle, that is going to condition you to feel like things like it's natural to go to the moon and things move in these incredibly insane percentages day by day. You know, waking up every morning where you look at your block folio and you're seeing, oh, up 50%. Nice. All right. Just at just, and it's not even a big thing. You get to sensitize to it. You get to sensitize to it and then you want more and more and more. And you feel like if you don't stay in, you're not going to get the whole thing. And if you can't get the whole thing, well, you can't reproduce it because you have this moon boy mentality where you are not comfortable in your own skills. I had this myself when I first started. I felt like every trade I could, I could, live, I could live or die on every trade. Of course, this is completely the wrong mentality to come around to things with. And remember, there is an abundance of opportunity. That is the reality of this game, abundance of opportunity. There is no, there is no situation in which you won't find another, another opportunity in any sort of trading markets, even with currencies which trade, you know, four decimal places to the right. <laughs> There's still there's still markets in there, and there's still plenty of opportunity, even with those extremely small moves, uh, uh, numerically wise. But of course, with position size and all that stuff, well, <laughs> the financial world always finds a way. But remember, you know, if you f if you have that feeling of if I don't catch this move, I'll never see one like it again. More importantly, where does this come from? Where does this stem from? It stems from a lack of confidence in your own abilities to catch these sorts of things. Now. I'm going to make the assumption that as a trader, you're probably learning some form of technical analysis. As far as I'm concerned, that is, unless if you're doing doing arbitrage or market making, that is the main mode for for most people out there who are not in the just just straight up gambling um, state. So understand that your skills are based off of a statistical narrative. Technical analysis is not perfect. That is the whole pro. That is the whole that is a whole mentality about the problem with it and where this problem and where this and where this psychological issue stems from however however i i believe that is quite literally the opposite it is soothing it should be a soothing reality that technical analysis is not perfect you can't be perfect and with imperfectness we know that we're going to be taking losses here and there. We might not catch everything, even with the best technical analysis. And yes, I can tell you, I've even seen the best, literally the best traders in the world. When I was on the floor of Mute Star Exchange Arca and then above Chicago Board's Ops Exchange, they were quite literally the best of the best, guys who have been doing this for 30, 40 years. And even them were wrong plenty of times, plenty of times. But they never doubted in the statistical narrative of their technical analysis, which they knew it was just a matter of, it was just a numbers game before they came onto a net win. So when you feel like I'll never catch a move like this again, first things first, more often than not, there's not a major move to be happening because if you were born into the late 2017 parabolic bull cycle in cryptocurrency land, that was a very mature, uh, mature market basically coming to its end after a three year run, as you can see over here. I mean, basically, basically starting in, uh, in 2015, end of 2015 and getting incredibly aggressive at the end of 2017. And if you were actually in during that 
during that uh, period, during that era. It wasn't really until Bitcoin actually uh, blew off its top over here that the alt started really having those insane moves, which got people conditioned to the wrong sort of uh, sort of reality that things just always move crazily and, and like a 10% move to the downside is nothing to, to worry about. You should just hold hodl on into it. Understand that that happens very rarely. Now, cryptocurrency does move faster than, than traditional markets, but there's no... In reality, there's no rush to see these sorts of things as they are rare. Once once every, you know, five years in cryptocurrency land, once every 10 to 20 years in, in traditional markets, I would say. All right, now let's get on to the third and final point. People feel like there is a lack of opportunity. Where does this emotion of feeling like you always need to be in a trade? Well, if, there's a la if you feel like there's a lack of opportunity, you will get into that emotional state where you feel like there is scarcity and when you feel scarcity you act you behave in non-rational non-logical ways what's another example of, of of where you might see this well um perhaps perhaps you have gone to a car dealer dealership recently and you were looking at a new lambo or maybe a new honda civic uh after after this sort of a market maybe that's a lot of people um and you go up to the uh, to the to the owner of the car dealership, the the car salesman, and you say, "Hey, I want this uh, I want this Honda in red." And he says, "Oh, oh, that that red color." And you're like, "Yeah, that's my favorite color. I love red, and I love this car. I literally want nothing more than this car." And then he says, "Man, there's actually uh, there's actually only one red color left." Immediately you feel that emotion of scarcity and so you want it more. You feel like there's not going to be another one. This is literally the most fucking common car in the world. <laughs> and, um, and and on top of that, even if it, you know, even if it did sell out, you could just go to another dealership, probably not too far away. My point is that with just a an understanding of time, an understanding of time, as always providing opportunities ever flowing opportunities in a market like uh, in a market in this scenario a car market in our scenario a financial market another one will come around but when you get into that emotional state you will make emotional decisions and an emotional decision that is exactly where a salesman would want you where exactly someone on the other side of the trade wants you or exactly someone on the other side of the trade wants you right so you might pay a little bit more you might do something a little bit irrational you might you might you might have missed your entry and then you jump right on into it because you see it running away and you're like oh my god it's going to do it and i can't you know and now it's getting further and further away from where you wanted to enter where which would have been a nice easy trade you know with good with good risk reward instead you enter in one way far away and now you're now you're all you know you're all scrumbled around these sorts of these sorts of emotional facts can really really mess you up when you feel like you need to be in that trade all the time and that's what really encompasses again the three things that that make this up is one we are conditioned to believe that if we're not doing something as you know that's essentially uh synonymous with our identity as a trader well then we're not living really up to our identity right two if i don't catch this move i'll never see one again of course that's not true um and of course, you can do it again. You you do have the skills, which is where that comes from, as just a lack of belief in your own skills. And then three, there's a lack of opportunity. So I better get in this one. I get I better get in this one right now because if I don't, then <laughs> then I'll, I'll never see one again. Right now, let's get onto a little bit more of a concrete re resolution. First things first, I want you to decide what type of trader you are. What it, and this entails what time frames, what indicators you're going to use, if any, what what is going to what constitutes a good risk reward, what what constitutes a good entry for yourself, what constitutes a good exit for yourself, what constitutes the whole risk reward of that scenario, and most importantly, and I really can't stress enough how much this helped me. It's helped me so much to get away from that emotional those those 
those pesky emotions, those pesky human emotions, which yes, I actually still do feel them a um, little bit less now, a little bit less now because I've been doing this for a long time. But what I did was I kept a trading journal. Now, this is not something that needs to be super formal. You don't need to like write it down on a piece of paper. You could do it on your phone. You could do it on like a voice note. You could do it on like an email or write an email to yourself or, or whatever it might be. Or maybe you do want to use like a, like a stone tablet you know, <laughs> and etch it in there. Um, but there's something to putting our thoughts down and emotions down and what we're and, and feelings down onto a piece of paper that makes it real and helps separate ourselves from it because we feel like it's inside of us and we feel like it is us it we feel like it is us so in order to separate it from us put it down on paper and then it comes out of you <laughs> and then it comes out of you and you can actually analyze it from afar so anytime you're considering entering a trade write down your thoughts write down what you're feeling write down your emotions now, if you actually do end up, and, bef and that's before entering a trade, if you actually do end up entering that trade, then I want you to write down your feelings and thoughts and emotions within that trade. And then once you close it, write it once again. And do this at least 20 times. You'll, you'll do it 20 times as that seems to be kind of like the average where people start to really get it, you know, get to be emotionally conditioned by something. Um, they say it's about three weeks, 21 days, 20 days, whatever, you know, 20 days, just easier to say, I suppose. Um, but about three weeks of doing it. And I would imagine that you're probably going to see enough results that you will just can, that you'll just naturally continue to do it. And then over time, you, you will become that person. You will become that person from doing this over and over again. And on to the reality of the situation. <laughs> on to the reality of the situation. Let it be a relieving fact that you do not need to be perfect grabbing every entry to be successful. You don't need to catch every move to be successful. Let's go back into the charts once again. Going over here. If you looked at this chart, there are plenty of trades in this four-year period that if you took and you took advantage of and you took good advantage of, you'd not need to make another trade likely for another, you know, at least another year. Again, I'm, I'm making these videos in mind with people who are taking uh, trading as a profession more seriously. So I'm going to assume that, you know, you do have the account size uh, to put on those sorts of positions and let's just go over. I mean, let's just, let's just go over a few. Let's use the most, <laughs> let's just go through over what I just said. Let's use the most easy, form of technical analysis, looking at higher highs and higher lows and basing trades off that. And we can start over here at the beginning of the bull run in 2015. And we say we have a nice, uh, we have a nice, well, you have this obvious uh, resistance trend line coming in right around this area, which we can shove in right there. As soon as you break it to the upside, okay, I'm in a trade. I'm in a trade and how you manage risk on that, that's obviously not really within the context of this scenario, but in this particular trade, you really don't need to do all that much. Um, really never even comes anywhere near your entry once again, once it even breaks out. Even if you hindsight traded this a week later, remember this is a weekly chart, you entered it right here, you could just said, all right, it's good enough for me. Um, but what happens if you're in that moon boy mentality and you feel like, oh shit, I just missed the only entry that I'm ever going to have. Bitcoin's going to go to 20,000 now from literally for what is this for 500 bucks almost. And I missed it. I missed it. I can't get in, you know, I, it's never going to happen again. Well, you put in a high right over here, come back down, put in a higher low. Well, once we do that, you can just make another trend line right here at your former high. We say, Hey, second that we break out of this area, which now we're actually really breaking out of this zone. All right, I have another opportunity. There is another opportunity, abundance of opportunity. Abundance of opportunity, so damn important. What if I miss that one? Well, you know what? We put in another higher high right over here. We even put in a higher high right over here uh, as well. I mean, there's there's multiple trades. There's multiple trades. Now, this is a weekly looking at four years or about four years of price action, I, I suppose you could say. How many of these trades do you need to make a living off of? Not many. They, uh, you, you get it. You get an amazing one every year or so. We just had an amazing one on the break of 6,000 to the downside. If you're shorter, if you're a longer, um, you know, there was a decent bounce over here, I suppose, but mm, that's why it's hard to do a bear. That's why it's hard to play longs in a bear market. But my point is 
is that even if you miss one, there's always another one right around the corner. This is a game where, again, even in even in current even in forex, which trade literally in you know five four or five six decimal places to the right, there's still opportunity even there. It's just the leverage is incredibly like you know 500x <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's, inc it's it's insane. If you think Bitmex is is insane, that just takes it another 50 steps further. Also. <laughs> Also, also, where did I leave off? Yes, that is exactly what I wanted to get through. You don't need to catch every move to be successful. There's an abundance of opportunities and you're in trust in your technical analysis skills that you don't need to be perfect and let that be a relieving factor. Let that be relieving. Let that calm your emotions as you write them down on paper and you understand, okay, is this an emotionally driven decision where I'm not where I'm not going according to plan, according to my own logic, or is this something that I actually truly want to do? Is this synonymous with the truths of the markets that we talked about? How does this fit in with the reality of that situation? These are things that I want you to think about every time before you take a trade. That's going to do it for this video. Again, something that I think is incredibly important and something that I feel like a lot of people get stuck in the, the, the feedback loop and it's very... <laughs> It's very difficult to get out of because, you know, at some point you, with that sort of a mindset, you will get a big trade and you'll be conditioned to only look for those big trades. But how often do we even see a big trade as we go back on over here? I mean, we're looking at four years of price action and you could probably count the major opportunities on both of your hands. Now, of course, on a lower time frame, you can certainly, you know, you can certainly have a lot more opportunities, but that is goes again into the context of that trading journal write down what your strategy is going to be if you're only going to trade the weekly only trade the weekly only look at the weekly <laughs> if you're going to trade the daily only look at the daily if you're going to trade the one minute there are plenty of other drugs out there for you that are probably better for your health <laughs> just kidding just kidding this is not Narco <laughs> narcotics advice it's not financial advice either but <laughs> again my point is understand these truths of tr these truths of the market understand your emotional conditioning with with regards to these truths and understand how to step away from that by by putting these emotions down on paper and looking at them from afar and then deciding from a logical higher consciousness place do I want to do this or not? Is this really synonymous with what my true intentions are? That's going to do it for this video. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.